Alright ladies and gents, I've got a new video today. I'm in a slightly different area as you may have noticed. My room is a bit of a mess at the moment. I'm uh, sort of reorganising it. And uh, firstly, I'd just like to apologise for my consistent, you know, lateness with posting videos. I know that I, uh, I'll say, you know, I'm back and I won't post for a few weeks. And uh, there's, there's a very important reason why. Uh, and that's because I've been spending a lot of time just uh, perfecting the fade on my, on my hairstyle, as you can see. No, I haven't really. That's that will be very, very unproductive. Um, there's been a lot of stuff going on. I've been focusing on various other projects, and um, but that being said, I'm going to still make a huge effort to be, you know, uploading videos for uh, the near future. So, without further delay, today I'm going to be talking about um, something which I haven't really spoken a lot about before, which is having a morning routine. Uh, now I know in a lot of my other videos I've spoke about, you know, the importance of having a nighttime routine before you go to bed. Uh, but there's actually a huge deal that can be said about having some some sort of routine in the morning, you know, a series of things you do every morning without fail, um, and that can really help you with not just lucid dreaming, but with you know motivation, energy throughout the day, happiness, health, and a whole load of other things as well. So, firstly, when I when I say morning routine, you probably think of, think of the sort of rigorous uh, military style boot camp where you know you get up at five make your bed, go for a mile run. I'm not talking about that sort of strictness. So the morning routine that I want to talk about today is uh, sort of loosely based on a book I read called The Miracle Morning, um, but it's sli I've slightly modified it uh, for A, for lucid dreamers, and B, for you know people who uh, maybe just want to personalise it a little bit. This is just my take on it, okay? So um, the, the, ro the routine I do myself is I'll wake up, and for, for, I should mention that it doesn't really matter when you do this. I mean, ideally, you want to wake up at the same time every morning. So, say if you wake up at 8 during the week, you want to wake up at 8 every day, like including the weekends. But it's not that bad if you, you know, at the start at least, uh, miss a few days where you wake up at different times. As long as you, the second you do wake up, you do the routine. That's sort of the most important thing, really, in this situation. So, the routine I do is I'll wake up and then I'll immediately read for 10 minutes. Uh, the reason for this is because when you first wake up, for the, for the first sort of hour after you, uh, you know, first open your eyes in the morning, your brain is operating at a lower uh, sort of frequency, uh, meaning, in simple layman's terms, that it's more open and susceptible to new ideas. So, the, the, so this is why, you know, if you read first thing in the morning, it's going to sink in more than if you read during the day, for example. Uh, because your mind is very open and it's like a sponge in the morning. It sort of opens itself and takes in new ideas. So read first thing for 10 minutes. Then I'll go through a series of affirmations. Now, a lot of you will think this is nonsense, but affirmations are really important. Affirmations are where you repeat over and over to yourself something which you want to be true, even if it isn't right now. Okay, so you could say, you know, I am wealthy and I get income from a variety of sources. And that will be an affirmation because it's something you want to happen and by saying it over and over to yourself, eventually your subconscious mind will believe it. Uh, and when that happens, you start changing your behavior in subtle ways, you attract things that you otherwise wouldn't have done, you notice opportunities that you otherwise wouldn't have seen. Um, this is loosely based on the law of attraction. Don't know if you're familiar with that, but um, anyway, so I'll go through some affirmations. Then I will meditate for 10 minutes. Now, I've, already, I've always said meditation is very important for lucid dreaming. It's also very important for almost everything else okay it's very important for health uh, there have been studies linking it to the you know um, decline in things like cancer diabetes depression it's it's very important it's very powerful um, it might not seem it because to a lot of you it's just sort of sitting down and thinking or just sitting down and doing nothing um, but there are scientific reasons which I won't go into today uh, why it's very powerful and you know it can change more than just your outlook on lucid dreaming so I'll meditate for 10 minutes and then I will immediately get up and I will go and exercise. So I'll work out. Now this could be something soft, like it could be Tai Chi, it could be yoga, it could be, you know, it could be going for a gentle walk or it could be uh, weight training, resistance training, right? Um, so what I like to do is break it up in the, during the week, obviously, because I do this routine seven days out of seven. Um, I'm not going to go and do deadlifts every single morning because... I wouldn't have time to recover. So I'll break it up and I'll do, say, three days a week of strength or resistance training with weights. And then the other uh, four days might be something more gentle, like going for a walk, going for a cycle, 
uh, or even just doing some sort of you know gentle stretching routine as long as you're doing something and you're moving uh, so then after that i will straight away go into having a cold shower now this is something which uh when i first heard about this idea i was you know shocked i didn't think it was worth doing i thought it was ridiculous um, and especially in my first few cold showers i thought what the, what the hell am i doing this is really uncomfortable um, but the more i started to you know keep doing it and the more i read about it uh, it's actually incredibly powerful and it's a very it's a very um healthy thing to do if you think you know before we had hot water and electricity and that sort of thing we all used to shower in potentially you know icy cold water waterfalls lakes rivers whatever um, and it is actually very good for your health um, few, for a few reasons why obviously when you submerse yourself in cold water submerge sorry um, all of the blood will rush to your internal organs right to try and keep them warm and this will mean that everywhere in your body you'll have an increase in blood flow in improved circulation it strengthens the uh, mucous membrane so if you're susceptible to hay fever colds flu that sort of thing it will make that less likely it strengthens your immune system it makes you feel better releases endorphins the list goes on the point is it's much better for you than a warm shower uh, and it's certainly much better for you than a bath so it also saves, saves water and time another added bonus so anyway i'll have a cold shower and then i'll get on with what i call the mit the most important thing um, so this is something I've taken from another book called The One Thing by Gary Keller. Uh, the one thing is what could be described as the most important thing that you could do during that day. So a lot of you might have to-do lists, you might have long lists of things that you need to get accomplished. Um, problem with lists like that is that they rarely get finished, um, especially if there's no deadline. So what I instead do is I will say, what is the most important thing I could do today that will make everything else seem you know, not worth worrying about. The, the most, the thing that if I did it, nothing else would be that important to get done that day. It would make everything else either easier or irrelevant. So I can't really think of an example other than a business example. If you're trying to start a business and you've got a huge to-do list of things that you could do, you know, you could set up your Twitter account, you could try and get email subscribers, you could write blog posts. The most important thing I would argue is finding out what you're going to do, what you're going to sell, who are your customers. And that would come way before setting up your Instagram, Instagram account and researching hashtags, right? So that, that's a, a sort of basic example, but the point is to just to focus on the one thing that you really want to get done that day that will make everything else um, irrelevant or, or easier, okay? So then after that, <laughs> after that list of um, things, I'll have breakfast. Uh, and the reason that I leave breakfast right until the end of that routine is because I find that um, when when we eat, right, when we take food into our bodies, our bodies will exert energy uh, to try and digest that food. And it sort of slows you down. You know, you'll have a release of insulin and you'll feel a bit sluggish. Even if you eat really clean and really healthy, uh, you'll still experience some sort of slowing down effect when you eat food. Um, and so the reason that I leave it till last is because I don't want eating breakfast to slow me down and to get in the way of my most important things that I could do that morning because like I said the brain when you first wake up for the first hour or so it's when it's the most susceptible and the most open to new ideas so if you spend that hour cooking eggs and then eating them uh, that's not really going to be very productive for your brain and it's not going to help you take in new ideas the eggs can wait you're not going to die if you wait an hour to have breakfast but you will learn more efficiently and improve yourself faster if you just wait that extra hour for breakfast. So I have breakfast, I'll have a coffee, and then I'll just get on with the day. Get ready for work, get ready to do whatever I'm gonna do that day. And uh, and that's that's that. So the reason that this, this morning routine that I've described to you, um, I wanted to share it with you guys, is because it's very powerful and it can help you with not just lucid dreaming, obviously you're subscribed to this channel because you want to learn how to lucid dream. And this will definitely help you with that. But I want to, in the future of this channel, I want to take a more holistic approach and talk about, uh, you know, self-improvement and um, health and the mind in general. And I feel like that will go full circle and link back to lucid dreaming anyway. So um, start practicing this routine. You can obviously, you can change things if you want. Uh, the one thing I forgot to add in also was um, just before 
So after you've done, um, so you wake up and then I, ideally you should drink some water as well because you're normally dehydrated after eight hours of sleep. Um, and then directly after that, you should do a reality check. This is uh, just going to help you uh, to lucid dream and help you to catch all those false awakenings. Uh, you know, for those of you who aren't aware of false awakenings, are where you sort of dream about waking up and then you'll be snapped back into the bed and you'll realise, oh, actually I haven't woken up yet, this was a dream. So by doing reality checks first thing, you'll catch all those false awakenings and have more lucid dreams. So anyway, I hope that's helped. Um, for those of you who are subscribed or that, who are watching this in general, um, obviously YouTube does sort of limit what videos you get shown. So if you would like to see more of my videos, um, please make sure you click on the little bell icon and click turn on notifications. I can't remember exactly how to do it, but um, I'm sure those of you who are active YouTubers will know. Uh, but yeah, so I'll see you in the next video. Leave a comment, leave a like, and have a nice day.